I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes and untold stories you probably wouldn't have known from the people who lived them. Today, the final part of my archival interview with the late Ron Glass, one of the great stars of Firefly and, of course, Barney Miller. Today, Ron talks about his cult classic science fiction series Firefly and the great Joss Whedon, what it was like going to conventions for the first time and dealing with the fans, and the moments that make your day as an actor. Plus, Ron talks about his famous All in the Family episode guest shot, and I reminded him about his part as the devil in a memorable episode of the 1980s Twilight Zone revival with Sherman Hemsley. Also, Ron Turk talks about his early days. <laughs> and some other fun stuff, though. That I have. Barney Miller. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about some of the other uh, things that you've done? Um, well, probably the, 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 the thing that's dearest to my heart is probably this, this uh, well, it is. I mean, the show that... Uh, the series, anyway, that I did most recently, The Firefly, which was the um, science fiction show, which this past summer we just made a feature out of it. And um, that was, I mean, that was a, you know, Joss Whedon is, he comes close. He comes close. He's got it, you know? What a writer. Yeah. What a writer. What can you tell me about that show? Yeah. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Joss Whedon fans out there, people are waiting for somebody <laughs> to show up on Firefly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I tell you, it's, they are the most loyal. They are just amazing. Just amazing. And they will go, I mean, they'd walk on hot coals for Joss. Have you been to a convention yet? Yes. And I made it back. Tell me about the convention. <laughs> Well, did you go to the, the San Diego? San Diego, yeah. What was that like? Just, I, I mean, just I, I, I couldn't have imagined it. Couldn't have imagined it. I mean, the the enthusiasm and the commitment and the uh, it, it's I mean, the the detail that they, you know, observe and will call you on and remind you of and all those kinds of things. I mean, it's. It's uh, it's just and and the commitment that they have like to Joss and to so forth and so on. I mean, it's just it's phenomenal. You know, it's funny. But they weren't able to keep us on. You know, they, maybe it wasn't up to them. They just weren't trying. Can I finish? Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm. Come on, I'm just kidding. No, I know. <laughs> Listen, I've been through the ringer on occasion. <laughs> You're fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What, what were you saying about I that? I have no idea. <laughs> we share that. We have that in common. I like this. I, well, you know, we, we can keep that going for as long as you can. Well, well, you know, hey, place it together. Um, well, but I love Whedon stuff. I like Firefly. I was one of the, I was one of the five people who actually watched it. And, uh, yeah. It was a good show. Yeah. It was a good right. You know, I went to the gym this morning, and I was huffing and blowing and huffing and blowing and coming down the thing, and this guy was sitting on a machine doing some lifts like this, and he said, hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. And I went over, and he said, um, my name is Joel, and I have this, uh, I'm a writer, and I uh, have this show that's going to come up, and it'll be on, on, on uh, February the 8th, and I'd really, really, really appreciate it if you try to watch it if you're available. He said, because when I was a kid, if it hadn't been for you, I never would have known that this was possible for me to do. I just went to the gym. That, that makes, I mean, that kind of makes your day, you know? Kind of makes you think, oh, Maybe I did do something. You did. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, That's mean, the, great. The best thing, and I'm just going to, you know, sort of gush here for a second, but the best thing about doing this show is meeting people who have been watching on TV or watching their work for years and years and years and just getting to say thank you. 
Uh huh. You know, you don't get to say thank you. You right. just sort of watch the show, and you know, it's like one thing in a movie theater or you're in a play theater, and you go like this. You watch TV. How do you get to say thank you to the mm-hmm. people who, who do this stuff for you? Mm-hmm. So you got to say thank you. Go to the gym. Yeah. I, you don't have to go to the gym. Like, <laughs> goes to my gym. Like, <laughs> 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 I was like, wow. That was great. That was really great. That must have felt really good. Yeah, you know. Somebody's listening. Somebody's watching. So you've done Somebody's getting it. Family Matters and Samper and Son, Good Times. Anything that stand out from any of those shows that... Well, you know, all in the family, of course, because um, it was because of all in the family. It was the episode of all in the family that I did that Danny saw that made him call me in for an interview when they were looking for somebody to replace the other character. So I never auditioned. I just went in and we just he he he, he saw the show. And then he and I had a conversation. We talked, and well, we laughed, you know, for a couple of hours, and then that was it, you know. Um, interestingly, though, he initially told me that the character that I was going to be playing was going to be a cross between Serpico and Toma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't work out that way. But then he. Um, he ran into Gregory Sierra and decided, nah, Gregory's the person who should be doing these disguises and blah, 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 blah. And again, I am so grateful <laughs> because I, you know, the character would have been different. It would have been a whole, whole different thing. Am I remembering right? You did the math demon on, the, on uh, Twilight Zone? Did I do what? The math demon on Twilight Zone. Is that you? Is that what that guy was? The guy with Sherman Hemsley? Yeah. Yeah. That was great. I love that show. You know, I get more comments about that show, and that show I did the whole, the entire time I was in total terror (laughs) because they called me like the day before it was to be shot. And as you recall, I mean, it was, it was 20 minutes of me just. And every once in a while, Sherman would say, oh, yeah, or something. You know, he'd say one line or something. And then I'd just talk for another, you know, I mean, for 20 minutes. And it was all of this technical language and all of this stuff. And plus that, I had on, the, it was before soft lenses. I had these hard silver lenses in my, I, I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. Plus you had to change your T-shirt every day. Exactly right. Exactly right. And back then, I was holding my stomach in and stuff, too. <laughs> I'm sure you don't <laughs> nah, who cares? <laughs> well, the, best, the best punchline of any TV show ever. What? You don't remember the punchline of the episode? No. <gasps> There's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't do. There's not a single thing in the world. Put any test to me, and I will give you your soul back. There's the, the, you can give me any... So, he goes, so there's nowhere that you can go that you couldn't find your way back from, no, nowhere, I'm omnipotent, I'm this, I'm that, or the other thing. There's no place, so you can go any place in the universe and find your way back here. Yes, and you can do anything, any task I give you, set me a task that I cannot do, and you can have your soul back. And he looks at you and he goes, get lost. <laughs> you see, after all that work I did, Sherman got get lost, got right? Get lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a story that you've dined out on all these years that you tell your friends, you tell your family, you come home from work one day, you won't believe what happened at the office today? What's the one story that you uh, that you still tell all these years that you can tell? Um, it doesn't specifically have to do with Barney Miller. That's okay. It has to do with when I first came out here in um, 1972. Um, I had agents already and so forth and so on and uh, they uh, they sent me around to all of the new agents I mean the, to all the casting directors and so forth and so on and after about two weeks of that the um, the agent called me I got a phone call and said you know come into the office and blah 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 blah, blah. and so I went in and um, I, I could tell there was you know something 
something wasn't, wasn't just great. So I went in and we were talking and so forth and so on. So the guy says to me, he said, you know, Ron, he said, um, I get great reports from, about you from all of the casting directors in town. Everybody thinks you're going to have a fabulous career in Hollywood, except you have to do two things. Now remember, this was 1972. He said, you need to do two things. One is you need to darken up. And two, stop speaking so well. <laughs> I never tire of that one. Oh my God. So you didn't take the advice I got. I dropped the occasional D or T, but. Uh, <laughs> not so then, no more tanning, no tanning booth. Not for long. Not for long. Ron, thank you so much. Thank no, you. we're. we're I think that'll do it. I don't know how to top that one. <laughs> I'm David Levin. Till next time, please leave me your comments and let me know what you think of the show. I read every one. If you can't watch the video version soon, you can listen to our podcast. And if you're listening to our podcast, you can watch us on YouTube at Pop Goes the Culture TV. Please subscribe. Please follow Pop Goes the Culture on Twitter at Pop Go Culture, Facebook, or email me at popgoestheculturetv at gmail.com. And please subscribe to our Patreon campaign. Just a buck or two from you can keep me doing these shows. And for three bucks, you can get a chance to be on our live sister show, Ask Them Yourself. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.